Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, basketball fans of all ages, this is Arthur E. Staff Gymnasium, home of your undefeated Brockton Lady Boxers. And today, they look to go 3-0 on the young season against the Barnstable Red Raiders in a rematch of last Friday when the Boxers were on the road down on the Cape. As always, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, joined alongside my broadcast partner, the one, the only, big game, Miles Jackson. Miles, the Boxers 2-0, already pulling off an upset against the third-ranked team in the state, the Marshfield Rams, looking to continue uh, the season rolling here tonight. Well, I'll tell you, that win against Marshfield was total team effort. Everybody contributed, great coaching effort by uh, Brockton Boxers, and uh, I just look for them to uh, come out here and uh, give Boxville another tough time and this time on their home court. It is the 2-0 Boxers against the Barnstable Red Raiders. Barnstable wearing their away red jerseys, red shorts, white and black trim. The Boxers in their home whites, black stripe down the side with red trim around the black numbers. And Alicia Fernandez the center of this team being scouted heavily by colleges. Three in attendance here tonight. Regis, Rhode Island College. And Curry joining the five or so colleges that were here the first night and a backcourt violation right off the bat for Barnstable. Yeah, Tate Fernandez has been a real leader early on this season. She's shown her senior leadership. I expect it to uh, continue throughout the season. Fernandez now in for Jade. Went off the glass and then Brockton's on the board first. Yeah, Jade Went, another contributor this year. She come off the bench last year, played some real good, showed some promise. Now she's in the starting lineup for the boxers, a junior. Abby L. Asusi's pass off the mark finds its way out of bounds. And now this is the sophomore co-captain of the boxers, Elizabeth Williams in for Fernandez who commits the travel. 33 seconds into the first quarter. Brockton two, Barnstable nothing. Yeah, it looks like the um, Lady Boxers are playing a man to man. Alice Susi over to number 21, Emily Robinson. Robinson in off the rim a few times, no good. Back, and back. Fernandez picking up the rebound, loses back, it, but back. Williams in the right place at the right time. Now Williams over to the sharpshader, Jacilma Montrand, no good. Barnstable comes up with the rebound, but. Run red, run red, red. Yeah, that's been working. Uh, what's not now? We have a stoppage. So one of the shot clocks is not working. Run red. Shot caller to our left is not on. Run red. Shot Double clock to our red, right red, is red, working. Red, red, red. Now Susi intercepted by Montrand who tips it high off glass to number 11. That is Nelani Montero, excuse me. Now Fernandez grabbing the rebound and she's followed on the way back up and will be at the line for two shots. That's just great rebounding effort by uh, the Lady Boxes, especially uh, Fernandez right in there. Got two or three chances. Finally, the whistle was blown. Fernandez at the line, no good on her first attempt. Nothing but net on number two. So three nothing, Boxer, six and a half to go in the first quarter. Shallow, get out, Jamie, go through. Look inside, post up, post up. Now Susi back over to Robinson. Robinson shot no good in. A put back attempt by number 22, Jamie Fitzgerald. Yeah, that was a nasty rejection by Fernandez on defense for the boxes. Williams, the overhanded football Hail Mary pass across to 
And Alicia Fernandez, Fernandez right back. Those two with a little give and go. What a beautiful wow. spinning around shot for Fernandez. Off the front of the rim, back against the backboard and in. Wow. Didn't even face the basket, put a nice spin on the ball. Went right in. Fernandez showing her basketball instincts. Always aware of where she is on the court. This is Fitzgerald's to Robinson. Her three no good. Bonstable shooting a perfect 0% on from the floor. Now Williams wide open look from three, no good. Montero coming down with the rebound. I eh, would have called a travel there. Now Montron for a deep three, no good. Brockton's thrown up a lot of those so far and Montero's put back attempt is no good. Fouled on the way up, she will be at the line for two shots. Hey, that was great hustle by Montero on the rebound. Looks like she might have traveled, but good hustle by the lady boxer. Montero, a senior on this uh, lady boxer team. Over two is Nilani Montero. The score remains five nothing boxers with five minutes to go in the first quarter. Emily, what are you doing? Gabby Alasusi stopping, trying to put one up. No good. And no luck on the attempt. Time out. Ref, time out. Lady Box is right now just smothering Bonstable on defense. Bonstable's having a tough time trying to get, trying to get a shot off. You can see the coach for Bonsable kind of laying in on his players, letting them know what they have to do to try to somehow get away from this um, defense of the Lady Boxes. Well, the first message in the, the Barnstable circle was to Abby Alasusi. He said, listen, if you're going to run the show, you got to run the show. You can't assume you're going to take all the responsibilities, score all the points. Basketball's a team game, and there's five of you on the floor for a reason. Exactly right. She, she's got to be aware of where her players are. She cannot take the basketball and start dribbling with her head down. You've got to keep your head up and look for your players that are open. Brockton's taken it away from Alasusi a few times. This is Fitzgerald to Robinson. Another Robinson to Fitzgerald. And another steal for the boxers and stepping out. A fouled was Fernandez. And an unaware boxer in Josilma Montron didn't know the ball was coming her way out of play. Turnover for the boxers. Yeah, Montron put um, bought the in inbounds and um, didn't look back. Play it through, threw it right, intended to throw it right back to her. Nice steal right there by uh, Montron. So for the third consecutive game, we see a different starting five for the boxers. Montron for three, no good. Gets her own rebound. Trying to force it inside to Jade Wentz. And that pass intercepted by the Red Raiders. Now a foul. It's number 
Emily's on the point. You and Emily. Number 11 would be Nelani Montero. Nice job by Emily Robinson, who drove to the basket and was fouled. Four minutes and four seconds in. Barnstable finally on the board. It's five to one in a high scoring affair here at Staff Gymnasium. Yeah, we're over halfway through this first quarter. Two to two was Robinson, so it's five to two. One possession game for the Red Raiders. Jay went out to Williams. Williams to Fernandez. Over back to Montrand. Her three, no good. Now 0 for 4 from beyond the arc. You know, I, I like Montron's shot, but she needs to follow her shot until she starts hitting him. Ball's coming right back towards her. All right, take a good shot. Okay, get back, get back. Turn around, turn around. It's Williams to Fernandez, out to number 4, fresh into the game. Her 3 is good, and that was... Annalee Lorenzo. Yeah, nice job of Lorenzo. She just came off the bench. Contributes right away. Lorenzo had a couple of three-pointers last game against the Marshfield Rams. We have a non-contact injury for one of the Red Raiders who my, my passed that ball mm. and just went down. Hopefully it's hard. not her left knee. She's wearing a brace on the left knee and that seems to be what's being discussed. The coach immediately running out. I believe that is Robinson down on the floor. And it is in fact the left knee that's being worked on. You can see the brace. And as Brockton boxer fans certainly know, a knee injury is never truly healed. It is more susceptible to re-injury. Exactly. One of the most fragile parts on an athlete's body is their knee. And you can see the medical trainer, Jerry, is tending to her. It's like she's going to try and get up. That was one of those scary non-contact injuries yeah. where there was no boxer or any other player in the area, and it was a, a pass and losing balance and hitting the floor hard. Yeah. And you can see... Walking gingerly. Barnstable will be manned down for presumably at least the rest of the first half. That's number 24, Reed Kohler. Yeah, it's kind of a loss for um, Barnstable because she had some height. I think she was a forward, so somebody's going to have to step up for that Barnstable team. Red, 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 red. The Lady Red Raiders. So it's Kohler out with the left knee injury. 2.45 left in the first quarter. It is eight to two boxers. And a shot clock violation against the Red Raiders. I Can't think, really fault them no, for that one. I think they were totally unaware. I was unaware, you were unaware. Everybody was unaware. <laughs> Montron in for Went Went double teamed and it's a jump ball. Raiders, Red Raiders getting in, getting in there quickly to get their hands on the ball. Constable intercepting the inbound pass. Now it's Alice Susi back into the game in place of Kohler. Go away. Put away. 
foul against Jade went for a hold. Go back, go back, Dory. Ellis Susie's little go rainbow go inbound. Back to Ellis Susie Switch. down low. Now a Heave Ho type three from yes. number 15. Definitely. Olivia Lukashinsky. No good. Good description. Heave Ho. And Fernandez. Right where she should be underneath that basket to clean it up. Go pick, go pick, go pick. Look. Go pick for her, pick for her. Lukashinsky being worked on by Williams. Williams called for the hold with both of her hands in the air. I don't know. She's doing a good job out there playing defense. She's she's tall. She's got some long arms. Uh, Williams, she's a uh, sophomore. So we're looking for some good things from uh, Williams. Elizabeth, tenacious defense. Meanwhile, Jamari Johnson into the game. A oh. long three off the top of the glass and in. That was a lollipop shot. That was good. It's Emily Robinson on the three point. Anything you can do, I can do better for the Brockton Boxers. No good on that attempt. And the rebound brought down by Maggie Murray. Another Red Raider hits the floor. Fernandez comes down with the loose ball. 10 5, a minute to go. And stepping out of play was Fernandez. Sideline, we have a sideline play. Where we get the back ball. Olivia. Number 21. Back court, back court. Nairomi Forbes into the game. Nairomi looks like Nairomi's a freshman, but I saw her warming up. And um, Naomi, you, she's going to be something because she knows how to drive to the basket. No. Back, Block for back. Fernandez, and now right. to. Forbes, her shot blocked. Good defense. The Barnstable bench got fired up for that block. I don't want to be mean, Miles, but you gotta ask why. Well, You've hit one field goal through the entirety of the first quarter. Well, you know, they haven't had a lot to cheer about, so. When they have a chance to cheer about something, no matter how minute, it was a defensive stop. The whole bench got excited, like you said. 10-5, under a minute to go. Now close to 30 seconds as Alasusi puts up a floater, no good. Lorenzo with the rebound for the boxers. About a second difference. Fernandez off the glass. Count it in, one. For Annalicia Fernandez. Oh, they're going to call charge. charge. Oh, unbelievable. And the, every boxer on the floor thought that that was a defensive block. Wow. Fernandez was getting ready to line up yeah. at the charity stripe. All right, good, good. Still nice play by Fernandez. Two, two um, Lady Red Raiders on her when she went to the basket and somehow she put that ball in the basket while two Red Raiders was on top of her and they call an offensive foul. 10 seconds to go. This is Robinson over to Lukashinsky intercepted by Fernandez with three seconds to go. Her last second three will come up well short. The buzzer sounds in the first quarter has come to an end. The score is 10 to 5. The boxers on top of the Red Raiders. Miles, this could be a long night. Yeah, as far as points being put on the scoreboard, right now it's been a defensive battle. More for the boxes than the uh, Red Raiders. Red Raiders are lucky to be only down by five. Boxes have missed some shots. A uh, few questionable calls, but I'm sure the, uh, as the game goes on, these Lady Boxes are going to uh, wear down the Lady Red Raiders sooner or later. I, I can see it happening. They just don't have the firepower coming off the bench to... Um, compared to the firepower coming off the lady, uh, the lady Boxers bench. Well, we saw it against the Red Raiders here last Friday night. The boys team starting off a bit slow. It was scoreless through the first four minutes or so. And then Brockton was able to turn it up in the second quarter and 
just absolutely blow out the Red Raiders on the men's side, you expect a similar result here tonight. Yeah, I mean, uh, you could tell the uh, Lady Box is a little bit more physical, quick, definitely they're quicker, they're faster than the um, Lady Bonstable Red Raiders. So it's just a matter of time. I, I see the Lady Boxers wearing down this um, Barnstable team. Kaylee O'Donnell Birch into the game for the Red Raiders. Abby Alasusi, top of the key, working against number 22. That is Isadora Amazon. We continue to see head coach Chris Connolly testing the bench. What are you running? And figuring out who his big contributors are. Emily, Emily, here, here. Jamie's one, Jamie's one. Go pick. Go, go, go. Pop out. Williams in for Alasusi. Alasusi forcing it down low as Brockton giving no room to even dribble down low. And eventually Robinson able to put up a floater. It is 10 to 7 boxers. Yeah, nice offensive boards there by the um, by Barnstable. A three, no good. Barnstable comes down with the rebound number 30. Dorian Funk. Got, got to get open. Quick, quick. That's Alice Susie. No, no. pass off the mark. Abby. And our Abby, play. Dribble to the corner. It's a bad angle. Dribble to the corner. Amazon out. And number 11, Ronnie Montero back in. Fernandez down low, a bad angle shot, gets her own rebound, one hands it over to Williams, Williams in for Jade Wint. Wint with a turnaround, floater no good, and Fernandez tapping the rebound, and it will be a Barnstable ball. And head coach Chris Connolly not happy with that one. Run slice, run slice, 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 keep Alice Susi down low to the corner, driving baseline out of play off of Montero. Barnstable retains possession, six and a half minutes to go in the second quarter. I'll tell you right now, Barnstable has creeped back in this, in this basketball game. Run, run. Only down by three points. A three high off glass back, and back. no, not even close on the other side. Back. This is Nelani Montero. Her three off the glass, no good. They just haven't been hitting those outside shots yet for the uh, boxes. Right now, nothing but bricks. One for about 12 from behind the arc, and a jump ball called. Brockton's going to take over. Good call right there by the referees. Good defense by the Lady Boxes. Six oh four left in the second quarter. Another night and another visiting team that thinks we're the check-in table. Well, you know, we look like we're doing something here. Besides calling a basketball game, we do look official. Everyone's just a little bit more thankful that this start time was moved up so the schools can start their vacations a little bit earlier. Originally scheduled for 7, this game moved up to 5 o'clock. Good decision right there. Excellent. Barnstable didn't have school today at all. They had the, the complete day off. Brockton had a half day, so you've got these guys sitting around all day waiting for 7 o'clock. Decision ultimately made, move it up to 5 o'clock. I get a pseudo day shift, the off at 7, the 6.30. Busy week for Brockton Community Access ahead. We get the weekend off, then after that, pure mayhem. Mayhem. We've got nine, count them, nine games in four days next week. Buckle up. We got the Oliver Ames Tournament. Brockton's girls and boys both in that tournament, along with Cardinal Spellman. 
Oliver Ames and Walpole. We will have each and every one of the eight games on Brockton Community Access. If y'all can hear this, send coffee and donuts, <laughs> please. Oliver Ames High School Gym. It's on Lothrop Street in Easton. There'll be a white van in the parking lot, a bunch of cables running out from it. And then on Saturday, we've got hockey to end off the week. Wow. We've got the Boxers hockey team against the Milton Wildcats. A three to tie, no good. Fernandez unable to draw the rebound, but the loose ball finding Elizabeth, Elizabeth Williams, excuse me. Now Montron spinning with it, trying to force it back outside. And a foul committed by number 22, Jamie Fitzgerald. And we're going to see number 20, Rebecca Tannis in for Annalicia Fernandez. Pass off to Mark Miles. I can only think of one word to sum what we've seen here tonight. That would be sloppy. Yeah, it's been a very um, <clears throat> sloppy game for some reason or another. One reason definitely is defense. Shooting hasn't been good either on either side. There's only been one field goal converted in this second quarter. The score remains 10-7. Fox is up by three. Jade Wint trying to double that lead. No good. Bouncing around and it's brought down by Melani Montero to Elizabeth Williams. Williams driving inside, finds some open space, fouled in the air. She'll be at the line for two shots. Yeah, nice job by Williams to go to the hole. She got rewarded with a foul. Williams, the sophomore captain. No good on her first attempt. Now that's saying something. You're a sophomore and you're a captain. Williams with it. 0 for 2 at the line and a double dribble. Yeah, she was ready to um, pass it and um, her teammate moved away not looking and instantly started dribbling again. This is number 15, dribble, Olivia dribble, dribble. Lukashinsky. As Fernandez gets ready to come back into the game. Good drive. All right. Good drive. Yeah, while we have a, a second there, Matt, one of our um, colleagues, Dick Enberg, Dick I'm sure you Enberg. heard about it today, passed away at 82, Hall of Famer. Ten Super Bowls. I always Dick great broadcast. He had that great voice. Good memories. Counted in one for Rebecca Tannis, who's at the line for a three-point play, trying to double the boxer lead. Yeah, nice job by Rebecca. She's a sophomore. Violation against the boxers. How many timeouts do I have left? Timeout. Barnstable's going to call a timeout with 4.09. It's 12-7 boxers on top of the Red Raiders and Miles. The whistles, the unforced errors, the turnovers continue for both sides. Yeah, it's, uh, nobody seems to be getting in their rhythm yet. Still a lot of time here in the second quarter. I'm just waiting for the lady boxers to break out. I tell you, though, the Lady Red Raiders of Barnstable are really hanging in there. Only down by five points at the moment. So this is still a ball game. I do like the uh, Boxers' defense. It's just their offense hasn't really got going yet. 
but their defense has been really good. Well, if you would like to join us at Oliver Ames High School next week in Easton, Massachusetts, feel free. The schedule is as follows. At 2.30, Brockton Lady Boxers face off against the Walpole Rebels. Right after that, it's the Oliver Ames Tigers versus the Needham Rockets. Hey, hey, and a travel by Barnes will end the late slate, 6 o'clock tip-off. It's South Boston versus Cardinal Spellman. And it's 7.30 as Lorenzo takes a three, no good. 7.30, it's the Brockton boys against Oliver Ames. As Fernandez hits a long two, 14-7 the score. Brockton doubling up the Red Raiders. The possibility for an all Brockton final on the boys slate. And that tournament continues Thursday. You've got the girls consolation game at six and the girls title game at 7.30. And Friday, the boys consolation game at six and the boys title game at 7.30. And you're exactly right. It could possibly be an all Brockton title game on the boys' end. Whistle stoppage. A one on one. Barnstable will hit the first shot to earn the second shot. And then on Saturday, we've got hockey. So run red to Emily. Feel free to bring us, as we mentioned, coffee, donuts, bagels, pizza. Elizabeth Williams to Fernandez, out to Montero, her three no good. One-handed throw over to Williams, Williams bad angle shot, no good. Fernandez in the right place to get the rebound. Montero pump fake for three, works her way inside, off the glass, no good. Fernandez with the rebound off the glass. Uh, and Fernandez knows where to camp out underneath the basket. Perfect position. Miles, at some point, Brockton has gone one for about 15 beyond the arc. Yeah, they still haven't You've found their stop rhythm. Stop taking those shots. Drive it inside. Try to open up space on the outside. Montero hard up from underneath the hoop. Nice fast break passing by the by the boxes number four. Lorenzo coming down with it, leading the charge. Made a nice pass to Montero. Just good defense by Boswell. They was all over it. Wint is in for Rebecca Tennis. Two and two at the line. 17 to nine the score. Brockton on top by eight and another travel called against the Red Raiders. Yep, yeah, that caused by the defense of the Lady Boxers. Red Raiders just don't have the quickness to overcome the great defense of the Lady Boxers. Went rainbow shot, good. Nice shot there by Went with a hand in a face. Still made the shot. There's a special guest in attendance Come on, hey, here come on, tonight hey, watching the Lady Boxers. It is the yeah. second top scorer from last year's team, Alex Gennaros. Watching her former teammates in action. Sophomore going off to play at Tabor. Did you say Gennaro's is here? Gennaro's is here. They could use her right about now. Yeah, they sure could. 11. All the way down. I was looking forward to uh, calling this year with Gennaro's on the Lady Boxers team, but unfortunately she's transferred broke over. broke your heart at the end of football season. Broke my heart when I heard about it. Janeiro's got those bird magic type instincts when she's out on the basketball court, which really would have helped these lady boxes. Looks, get it out, get it out, get it out, get it out. Nine, eight, seven. Seven on the shot eight. clock and a jump ball called. I thought it was going to be a travel. Kaylee O'Donnell Birch into the game, replacing Lukashinsky.
Another turnover, Williams with this one to Fernandez. Fernandez drawing the block in will be at the line for two shots. Williams doing a nice job. Once she got the ball, she quickly got it to Fernandez who was already down there by the red paint. And of course, she's gonna smartly put it up and get fouled. No good on her first attempt. 21 to nine, the boxers up by 12. With a minute and 21 seconds to go in the first half. One or two at the line is Fernandez. 13 to nine the score. Uh, 22 to nine, a 13 point lead. I should say, for the boxers. Get away, get out of there, Emily. Now Susie working away inside, double teamed by the boxers. This one finding the rim, no good. Fernandez coming up with a steal and a foul. This one's going to be called against Dorian Funk. Fernandez will be at the line. Now a double bonus situation. Fernandez good on her first attempt. Williams comes out in favor of Nairomi Forbes. one a rainbow shot kind of looks like it slipped out of her hand a little bit yeah she stands about a foot away from the uh, free throw line when she shoots her free throws Get it out. Nice work. Nice shot. Get a rebound. Get a rebound. spin around jumper no good and a foul committed by Barnstable and another two shots. This is going to be a very long 41.6. Emily Robinson in some foul trouble. She's got three personals. Forbes here. She's a freshman. And if she's uh, getting some playing time on this varsity team, she's got some skills. Two at the line is Forbes, and number 15, Olivia Lukashinsky into the game. She replaces Emily Robinson. Don't stop, don't stop dribbling. Where's the pick? Now Susi now, working her way down low. Long two, no good. Lorenzi, Lorenzo coming down with the rebound, loses it. And in alone is number 11. And it is O'Donnell Birch, her way up off the glass. And in 25 to nine, the score brought it up by 16. Fernandez, last second floater, no good. The buzzer sounds, and the first half, thankfully, has come to an end. Miles, 25 to 11. A very sloppy first half for both teams. Yeah, but I see the Lady Box is starting to pull out a little bit. They're starting to hit a little few more shots. Luckily, they're hitting them all from the inside. Um, still, the outside shot is not really falling yet, but uh, they've Lady Box have had spread up, has spread um, further their way away from uh, this Lady Barnstable team. It's 25 to 11. The Boxers with a 14-point edge at halftime. Over the Barnstable Red Raiders, we're going to step aside and take a short break and bring you second half action right after this. Look at you. You're at the top of your game. At work or at play, you're unstoppable. Nothing can throw you off track. Oh, hey. She's cute. Nice going, man. Things are going great for you. You've earned a night out. Good drinks, good friends. Yeah, we can go ahead and call this a good night. Wait, is that your car? Uh-oh. Not smart. Yeah, I saw that coming. Say goodbye to her. Ouch. That'll hurt your bank account. 
you're looking at around 10 grand in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. I hope you like eating frozen dinners alone. Let's try this again. Smart move. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. I'll be right back. Hi. You think you're probably sober? Yeah. But you're thinking about taking the back roads home just in case. If you're probably sober, then why would you do that? Good choice. Probably okay isn't okay. If you see a warning sign, stop and call a cab, a car, or a friend. That's a full glass of wine, I'll be. Like I'm watching you for the answer? Yes, five, four. Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, basketball fans of all ages, welcome back into Staff Gymnasium for second half action. Between the Barnstable Red Raiders and really Annalicia Fernandez, Annalicia Fernandez, 11 points in the first half for the Brockton Boxers, matching Barnstable's total for the first 16 minutes. No foul trouble for the Boxers. The Red Raiders, on the other hand, cannot say that. Wow. Number 22 for the uh, Red Raiders. She just hit a shot and was smiling. I don't blame her when she came back down the court. Like, I hit that? Fernandez having a decent game in front of some college scouts. Now it's Fernandez, one-handed bounce pass to Montero, back to Fernandez, fouled. And will be at the line for a couple of shots. Abby, Abby, they're hedging you, they're hedging you. Let's go around the head. Okay, you see that? They bumped you out. Run, run, run. Down the court. Quick, quick, quick. Let's go. Look, look. One or two at the line is Fernandez, 26-13. Brockton back to double the Red Raiders total. The Red Raiders wearing their away red jerseys with white and black trim. The boxers in their home whites, black stripe and red trim around the black numbers. Absolutely worth mentioning, our Mad Dog Matt Nelson. Jordan alongside big game Miles Jackson as the 2-0 boxers try to extend their season opening win streak to three games. On the night before vacation officially starts, Three-pointer comes up short for number 22, Jamie Fitzgerald. Three on one up court for the Boxers and Montron loses it out of play. Yeah, good hustle by the Red Raiders defense right there to come from behind. Disrupt the shot of Montron. Montron with a three, no good. We've seen that a uh, Fair amount tonight, Miles. The the heave ho type threes. They're not really taking their time to shoot it, but heaving it up with one arm like the I call it the Lonzo ball. Lontron uh, loses it. Barnstable takes over. She's got to hold on to that. That was nice passing coming down the court by the Lady Boxes. Got to grab that basketball. Lorenzo getting ready to come into the game, the sharpshooter. Already with the three pointer tonight. Hold against the boxers. Montrond out, Lorenzo in. Good defense by Lorenzo. This is 
Robinson, no good. Montero coming down with the loose ball. Williams to Jade, went, went for three off the back of the rim, no good. Tapped out, Wint picks up the loose ball. Quickly gets it over to Elizabeth Williams. Williams to Fernandez. Fernandez wide open look. It's going to be well short. If she was at the line, that might have gone in. If she would have just followed her shot, just go in about three or four steps, she would have had her own rebound. In and out for Barnstable. More turnovers than points tonight for these two teams. Barnstable drawing the foul. Abby Alasuzzi will be at the line for a couple of shots. Yeah, boxes up by 13. Like you said, a lot of turnovers on each side. Good on her first attempt was Abby Alasuzzi. Went ripping down the rebound off to Lorenzo. To Williams, her three, no good. Now go, go, go. Susie against Williams, one on one. Now Susie wins the battle, gets a shot up. No good, Jade Went coming down with the rebound, falling down to the floor, called for a travel. Yeah, good hustle by Went. She just couldn't quite get a hold of that basketball. We have not seen Jayla Smith on the court tonight. We've also not seen Taylor Cast Peterson. Nice job by Lorenzo to get that ball out forward in front of her so she could speed up. And um, she got fouled, but nice job on that attempted fast break. Time out called by Barnstable's coach. 26 to 14, a 12 point edge for the boxers. With 4.14 to go in the third quarter. So Miles, nothing much going on this weekend. Big divisional matchup, Pats play the Bills. But that's a big game. game. The Bills Couple Patriots. Celtics games. Yep, Bills Patriots, big game. Um, last time the Bills paid the Patriots, Gronk was uh, a little over aggressive, got uh, lost his head, and was uh, suspended for one game. And um, I'm sure the Bills are looking to um, looking for some payback, mostly in a win more than uh, trying to pay back Gronk. But I'm sure they're looking for a payback with a win against uh, the Patriots. If you're there, look in section 313. You'll find me. That's where you'll be. I'll be there. Where you long, Johns? Oh yeah. Good, good, Abby, good. Amazingly, the first regular season game as a fan for the Mad Dog. I lied. The second went to a, the the Pats Colts playoff game a few years ago. Legarrette Blunt three touchdowns. Went to when the Bears came to town. Albert Louis Jean, a graduate of the greatest class in Brockton High history, class of 2011. On the Bears came to town to face Tom Brady and the Pats. We were there. Five on the shot clock and steal for Jade Wint. Travel, travel, travel. Wint ran out of room. Yeah, she, she might have got away with a travel on that um, attempt when she went to put it up. Lorenzo for two, no good. Celtics on a little bit of a skid lately, losing to the Heat and the Knicks. There's one thing that bugs me more than anything else in professional sports. It's when you 
you underestimate a guy's value to a team and you lose him. And he comes back into your house and puts up 30. Yeah. Kelly Olenek Kelly. did just that. Kelly sure did. He was on fire. Nice give and go. Just Williams just Williams. couldn't finish it off. She should have put it up a little bit stronger, but nice play by the Lady Boxes. Working it inside. And then the Knicks. I don't even know what happened against the Knicks. The Celtics were just... I mean, they weren't there mentally. Mentally, they weren't there. Bruins a little bit of a win streak. Bruins are looking real good lately. Charlie McAvoy on his 20th birthday getting the shootout winner. Bonsables cut it down to 10. Never say die for the Red Raiders. Fernandez on the floor. Bonsable has the ball. Slow down. Protect the ball. Protect the ball. What are you playing? Call something. What do you call? Get out of it. Get out of it. A block for Fernandez. Emily, what play are you calling? What do you play you calling? What? And the hottest news today. It seems like we can't go five minutes without a big name being accused of sexual assault. Who do we got now? A slew of ESPN and NFL network executives and on air talent, Michael Irvin. Doesn't really surprise me in, in, in the sports world. I mean, the former players, that's one thing you get. The executives. Tough break right there for the um, Red Raiders. Some rumors going around that, well, first of all, ESPN president John Skipper abruptly resigning. Wow. He pulled the old Bill Belichick, signed a three-year contract extension in August. Resigning last week. Wow. What's that tell you? And they say it's because he's got addiction issues. I don't know so much that I believe that. I think it's more along the lines of if he didn't get out now, he would have been forced out because he's probably guilty of addiction. <laughs> Fernandez with the rebound to Williams. Went it's Montron going to come back into the game. A timeout. 103 to go in the third quarter. It's We got, we got some research going on down on the sidelines here. We're trying to figure out the last time. Well, we won, The boys won a state title. And 1985? And, and, and what, um, what category? Boys basketball. 19 what? 85? Wow. It's been that state long? Title? Yeah. Oh, we, we got to we came close. a few years ago. Yeah, we came close. Of course, the banner raising going to be here for the state soccer champions, the Brockton Boxers. That was an exciting run. First banner raised here. It's what, 05? I think the last team banner. Has it, did you say it's been raised? Not yet. Oh. Not yet. Special ceremony in January. Montron for three, no good. Special ce ceremony in January, USA Today coming down to celebrate the boxers being ranked number seven in the nation. Another missed three for Brockton. 
Rainbow shot, almost hitting the ceiling and the three-pointer is good for Emily Robinson. Yep, that went up to the heavens. No shot clock, 15 seconds left in the third quarter. Brockton up by seven. Lorenzo looking to extend that. Her pass off the mark, intercepted by the Red Raiders. Seven seconds left. Abiella Susi. Three seconds, her wild shot off the glass, no good. The buzzer sounds, the third quarter has come to an end, 26-19. Barnstable draws closer, and the turnovers and the sloppiness and the fouls, all of that nastiness continues for both sides. Yeah, the Red Lady Red Raiders has chipped this lead down to seven points going into the fourth quarter. So Brockton's really gonna have to pick up their offense a little bit here in the uh, fourth quarter. They don't want the um, Red Raiders to get too close. Anything can happen when you're only down by seven, five points, going going in with two minutes left in the ball game. So Brockton's really got to put on the uh, defensive um, rockets here in this uh, early on in this fourth quarter. Really apply some pressure to the uh, Lady Red Raiders. And I'm kind of impressed with the Lady Red Raiders that they're still hanging in there. I thought Boston would have wore them down by now, but um, they're hanging in there. End of the third quarter, as is tradition. Want to give a shout out to our cameraman for tonight's festivities. The one, the only, the prolific cinematographer, Aaron Tebow. The prolific? Prolific cinematographer. Wow. With a little pre-holiday delivery in place of the postman. Postman incapacitated. He's on light duty as Williams tips it away. Barnstable comes up with a loose ball. Yeah, nice recovery. Everyone send a prayer out to the postman. He's got a grade two sprained ankle. Nobody knows how it happened. He was walking up a ramp, and the next thing you know, I'm driving him to the emergency room. Wow. So send a prayer, some giant teddy bears, some roses, all that <laughs> lovely stuff. One North Main Street, attention, the postman. Brockton High News, the Boys basketball team with a huge win. I mean, huge. Like, you put this win on the U.S.-Mexican border, you got your border wall right there. 55-53 over the B.C. High Eagles. Wow. That must have been an exciting High. game. Should have been at that one. Cannot wait for that rematch here at Staff Gymnasium. So, box is 3-0? 3-0. That game was played uh, Thursday night? 4-0. Uh, no. 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 Was that game played Thursday night, Wednesday night? Uh, Wednesday. It was at BC High on Morrissey Boulevard. That was a defensive battle. Talking with head coach Bob Bowen before the last game. He said, listen... You got a good team. And he says, I said, is there any matchups you got circled on the calendar? And he said, January 16th. Brighton? Brighton. <laughs> Brighton coming into Staff Gymnasium last year, embarrassing the boxers. 99 to 47, the final score in that one. With the Bengals getting the victory. Coach Bowen, excited. Said, and he should be. That's one. We're, we're going to take it to Brighton. We're looking forward to that one. If we can match up with the Bengals, I think we can make a deep run. And that's what Coach Bowen said. Well, I tell you, they took a huge step. I'm sure getting in that top 10 rankings. 
of the globe by beating BC High on BC High uh, turf on their court. And it's like a big said, win. Yeah, big, big win. win. That definitely grabs the attention of all the other schools um, that are up there and are going somewhere during this uh, high school basketball season. So I mentioned that win to Lady Boxers head coach Chris Connolly. He said, good, I'm glad the Eagles lost. I'm a CM guy. Oh, yeah. There's no love lost between CM and BC High. And you all know me. I just, I don't like any of those private Catholic schools that go into the, the public schools and just dominate and you can recruit, you can say there's college scouts at every game, you've got state-of-the-art workout facilities. Of course, a product of that in attendance tonight, Alex Gennaros, point guard that was poised to take control of this team this year. Definitely so. Williams now in some foul trouble, called for the hold. Yeah, when I first heard Gennaro's was uh, was not coming back this year, got a deep. I mean, it's heart. It's it's heartbroken. We, yeah, we lost Jelani Jackson to graduation, Brianna Santos to graduation. We've got four returners from varsity last year, two starters. Everyone else is new. Yeah, and it, it's it's not even just new to the program. You've got four kids on this roster that play JV. Yeah, you have a young team, young boxer team, lady boxer team. Nice job right there off the glass. But, uh, yeah, this is a young boxer team. But there is a feeder program that has started up. Brockton Rain Elite that is promising to bring Brockton basketball back to greatness. Nice job by Fernandez right there. We just trying to give Brockton youth an opportunity to play. Play the sport that they, they love, you know what I mean, in their city. So this is Jacob Tagger, who started this whole thing with Coach Marcella Reigns a few years ago. Well, I had another program, Brockton Basketball Club, and I saw Coach Marcella was running a program out of Easton. She was running the program. She was part of the Dana Barrows Club. Um, and all our kids from Brockton were playing out of town, so I said, why don't we just do it here? So I asked to you know, join up with her and just help her out. I'm, I'm just assisting her. She's absolutely incredible. She's a great role model for um, the young people that we have in the program. Uh, student athletes first, you know what I mean? We have a lot of young people that are playing school ball right now, and the focus is for them to do well in academics and well and work hard on the court. A couple of trophies last year. Tell us about those. Um, our eighth grade gold team went to the national tournament. Um, they came in, let's say eighth in the country, um, eighth in the entire country. Um, we, you know, we won uh, probably, I want to say 11 um, state and um, New England championships for AAU, you know, competing against, you know, the best in, in the country. Um, like I said, the kids just play hard. They, you know, all, a lot of good, um, just positive young people, so. Just trying, like I said, giving them an opportunity to play. So what age groups does this cover, and when will we see some of these guys up here at Brockton High? Well, you already see a couple of them at Brockton High. Um, a couple of the kids I used to coach. Um, you have uh, Amir, um, Charles, who's on varsity. You have Tyshawn, you know, um, who's with me some years back. Then you have Trent Biddle. He's on, I think he's on JV right now. Um, and there's a couple other kids that are on the JV squad, too. Um, we have, I think we've grown to 10 teams. So we started out with two. And in two years, we grew to, you know, 10 teams. So we're just, we have a lot of kids that want to play. And we want our kids to stay in Brockton to play. We have too many of our kids, as Mr. Jackson would tell you, we have a lot of Brockton kids that have to go out of this city to play and, and have a, um, an opportunity to be able to play basketball. So we want to keep Brockton kids here. That's the goal. Yeah, that's a great attitude to have, Jacob, is to try to keep our kids here at um, in Brockton. Um, again, great attitude to have to try to keep our kids here, our talented kids.
keep the talent right here in Brockton. As you can see, you work with these kids all the time on and off the court. And I'm just glad to see there's some young adults here in Brockton to care about our kids. Hey, listen, you set the example for myself and a lot of other um, a lot of other people in my group. So just trying to follow your lead, I'm, sir. I'm, keep it going. I'm just glad you're passing the torch because uh, that's what we need here in this day and age. Mm -hmm. They've gotten a lot rougher as um, time has gone on. And uh, that's what we need more, more people like you to uh, get out here and uh, help these kids uh, move along in life. And you're right about passing the torch. We need to, to bring the, the next generation up. Because if we don't, it's going to all fall apart. So we got to encourage our young people and, and put them in a position to, to lead the, the generation after that. So I'm blessed just to have an opportunity to be able to volunteer um, and work with our young people. But I've been doing this. I had hair back in the day. I, since I was 18 years old. I've so did Miles. <laughs> he still has hair. Yeah. <laughs> Not on top. Miles used to have an afro. I know. Yeah. Back in the day. Back in the day. He could still bust it out if he wanted to. George Jefferson style. <laughs> you don't know about George Jefferson. You, Disco Inferno started playing at halftime. <laughs> Miles was about to boogie down a half court. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Miles a DJ too. Don't don't people need to pay attention. Old school. It's a man of many talents right there. Like I said, this is you know one of the mentors, you know, myself growing up, and I've always been an outspoken person. He always was um, uh, respectful to me, and I I mean I appreciate it. Um, I appreciate you guys letting me just come up here and watch the game and get on the mic for a second. Um, Brockton girls winning by 12 with what, 252 to go. They're but looking good. They're undefeated now. Just your opinion on the um, boys' basketball, varsity basketball team this year from what you've seen. A lot of potential. A lot of, lot of potential. We have a, a large group of juniors, I think, on the squad. So I want to see um, – how the JV and the younger groups look for next year. But I think they can go far. I think they definitely can go far as long as they play hard. And Coach Bowen makes sure he stays on them, though. You got to gotta put a fire in these, in these young people. And they want it. You know what I mean? They definitely want it. We need to, to bring back a competitive basketball program in Brockton because we have a lot of talent here. But like I said, I'm, we haven't won since 1985 a state championship in basketball. And we are definitely one of the largest schools in the country. In my opinion, that's not acceptable. Exactly. It's not acceptable. Um, City of Champions, we got to start bringing some championships back. Or at least being as competitive as possible. You know what I'm saying? So it, the future looks bright. Hopefully we um, keep moving in the right direction. And we have the two best commentators around. <laughs> <laughs> With the best sweater. I love this sweater. Yeah. I hope the camera catches the sweater. It's the ugly sweater. They call it an ugly sweater. It's beautiful. Yeah, I was about to say, I mean, I'm a Lakers fan, but I actually like this. Lakers. I am a Lakers fan. Magic and Kobe, I'm sorry. Maybe you can teach Lonzo Ball how to shoot a ball. Yeah, I don't know if anybody can. <laughs> I don't know. He, kind of, he, he starts down at his waist and he heaves it. Like he's pulling out of a holster? Yeah. He's exactly. making and, money, though, right? <laughs> he's making money, but he's like 32% on the season. I know he's 100% in his bank account, though. You know what I mean? So, um, it's going to be interesting next year. Free agency. I think you might see Paul George and maybe LeBron James go to my team, the Lake Show. It's a possibility. I think yeah, there is. One or the other, not both. I think they can get both. I definitely do. What's up with them? Um, the, I heard there was talks around dra um, trading for Davis, Anthony Davis of the Celtics, getting rid of Jalen Brown. And They've been talking Tatum. about doing that forever. Danny Ainge is not going to get rid of Tatum. No. I would. Brown, maybe. I would. Davis is special. Tatum yep. has got a bright future. He's incredible. He is. But they could win now if they get Davis on that team. But I don't think Davis wants to really come to the Celtics. You get a chance to play with Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving is the yeah. premier point guard in the league. That yes, guy he is. is. going to go down as one of the best. I tell you, the, the parody games. in the NBA is just absolutely incredible. You can list the title contenders on one hand. Golden State will get it again, though. It's Golden State, San Antonio, Cleveland. Houston. Houston, maybe. They're good in the regular season. Playoffs is a different story. Yeah, but none of those teams are going to beat Golden State. No. Their chemistry. When KD got traded, I knew it was a good fit. He's unselfish. He fits in their system. They play defense. 
they, they're going to win as long as they want to. As long as that nucleus stays together, they're going to win with Steve Kerr there. I would love to see Kyrie with Anthony Davis. Sorry, Tatum. It's a good thing I'm not the general manager. Tatum would be gone <laughs> in a heartbeat. So the Celtics still have, I think, two number first-round picks this year, like three second-rounders, two first-round picks next year. They could put a package together for Anthony Davis. They could. But think about Kyrie, Gordon Haywood when he's healthy, Anthony Davis, and Al Horford. They can find a two, a shooting guard in there, but that, that would be a tough four. It's very tough to find a great point guard like Kyrie and then a great big man like Anthony Davis. They could win now with quick, those guys. Quick side note on Al Horford. As a broadcaster, I understand liking the way a player plays or liking a player in general. Tommy Heinsohn has got to calm down on his love affair with Al Horford. <laughs> Al Horford's like old school. Yeah. Fundamental basketball. Yep. No, no tattoos. Yeah, he just, just plays the game. No flash, just fundamental basketball. So you got to appreciate it. Basketball people appreciate somebody like that. Lorenzo for three, no good. Wint coming down with the rebound. Counter and, and one for Jade Wintz. Yeah, nice job by Jade Wintz. Go back up by double digits. I mean, I could rip off a few quotes that Al, that Tommy Heinsohn would definitely say if he hasn't already. Al Horford, greatest thing to happen to the NBA since at, uh, Michael Jordan. I've heard him compare the two before. Don't look at me with that tone of voice. <laughs> I wish they could hear my face, yeah, facial yeah. expression. Yeah. He has compared Al Horford to Michael Jordan. It's time they need to, they need to fire him. He has <laughs> compared Al Horford to some of the greatest NBA players of all time. Fernandez for three, no good. Went with the rebound. Put back Ooh, off nice the glass. Nice shot. Nice shot way off, high off the glass. I tell you, these lady boxers, they rebound and play defense, huh? Look at this. Got a steal. Jacob, there's a little renaissance going on with Brockton Sports. Boys and girls basketball both looking good early in the season. Of course, boys soccer, state champions. We've got the track team that go, 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 went to go, go, nationals go. last year under the radar. Yeah. Cole Wyman, Brockton wrestling. Cole Wyman, first of all, back-to-back back -to -back state championships for Brockton High Wrestling. Now, that's Coach Fentress, right? Coach Deshaun Fentress. Oh, listen, people in Brockton need to pay attention to what he does. He's so dedicated to those kids in the classroom. Coach Fentress and the wrestling team need to get more credit. Yeah, definitely so. You got all these teams with successes. Brockton sports coming back to greatness? I would like to hope so. You know what I mean? It's, it's encouraging. Hopefully we stay on this path with basketball and um, football. But like you said, we need to recognize, like you said, state champions in, in soccer. Got the wrestling team doing very well. Um, track. I would love to see Brockton like when when we were growing up back in the early 90s. Um, like I said, I'm just I want to see Brockton boys win the championship, go far in, in basketball though. I it, as a basketball coach myself, it's tough to not have won since '85. That that's tough. We're we're Brockton. This is the city exactly. of champions. Like, exactly. Got to get one. We have a lot of talent. You know, we have a lot of talent that leaves Brockton, though. A lot of our young um, student athletes go to other towns and other schools. We need to try to find a way to keep a lot of our kids here because I don't think we've even touched the surface of the talent that we have and could have in Brockton. But it looks promising. It really does. Last question for you. Know you're a fight fan. Dana White acknowledging that Floyd Mayweather is in talks with the UFC on a multi-fight deal? No. Don't do it. Floyd's my favorite fighter. Don't do it, Floyd. Don't get beat up in the, in the cage. No. Nope, not a good move. It would certainly be interesting. I mean, it'd be a blowout for Conor McGregor, but a rematch in the octagon. No, it wouldn't be interesting. Last second shot for Brockton. No good. The buzzer sounds, and this one has come to an end. 37 to 24, the final score. Brockton moving to 3-0 on the year. The Red Raiders falling to the boxers here at Staff Gymnasium. Miles, it was sloppy, it was ugly, it was a gritty win for the Brockton boxers. Yeah, it was sloppy, it was ugly, but Brockton's defense was excellent this evening. 
um, really made the impossible Lady Red Raiders work for every shot out there on the court. Um, but um, Lady Boxers won this game on defense, Matt. They won it on defense. So it's 37-24. We're going to get head coach Chris Connolly's thoughts on a hard-fought victory, and you mentioned it. The defense of the boxers really the game changer in this one. Yeah, it was definitely the game changer because their outside shooting was terrible tonight. For some reason they just couldn't hit a shot outside, but their inside game was clicking. Their um, offensive boards was clicking. Defensive boards was clicking. They had a good fast break. Uh, just overall good game except for their shooting from the outside. Annalisa Fernandez, 11 points in the first half. Huge game, college scouts in attendance. Yeah, and, and she really put on a, a nice uh, job showing what she can do out here on the basketball court. Good uh, awareness out there on the basketball court. Knows where to go when the ball is shot by one of uh, her teammates. She knows where to place herself underneath the boards and park and get that rebound. We saw a lot of shots off the offensive boards for um, Fernandez. Just an overall great player. 37-24 miles. Lackluster in the offensive zone. What can Brockton look forward to in a week of practice and tournaments against teams that aren't really not the best opposition, but there's, there could be some uh, easy meatballs in that Oliver Ames tournament. Yeah, possibly, but they really have to work on their outside shooting. Um, I was not impressed this evening with their outside shooting. long as they don't dominate the boards, they can make up for the outside shooting, but they have to dominate the boards on both ends of the court. Well, 37 to 24, the final score. The Brockton Boxers getting the win over the Barnstable Red Raiders. All right. Here with head coach Chris Connolly. Chris, big win, hard fought, defensive battle. Uh, yeah, it was the first time we've gone against a zone this year and we just could not put the ball in the basket. I'd say we shot maybe, I know we hit one, probably put up about 18 or 19 of them. So when you're shooting like that, it's tough to win, but defense and rebound and kept us in and kept us to get that, uh, that win. The name from last game reappears tonight, Annalisa Fernandez, 11 points in the first half. Talk about her effort in front of a few colleges tonight. Yeah, she finished uh, 15 points. Uh, 16 rebounds, four blocks, six steals, three assists. Uh, she was close to averaging a quadruple double coming in today. Her assists and um, steals were a little down, um, but she, she, you know, she battled tonight. And every time she touched the ball, she was facing double, triple, quadruple teams. Um, but she's going to be facing that pro probably every single game. So, a hard-fought defensive effort. What are you looking forward to in the week of practice for the Oliver Ames tournament? Well, it's uh, just two practices before we're there, so we um, we we have to we have to fix up our defense, our offense a little bit. Our defense is good, our rebound is good. We just gotta work on our offense and our sets and that type of stuff against the zones, just particularly.